Hello everyone and welcome to your video lesson of mathematics. In this video series, I'm solving A2 mathematics fast paper questions, topical fast paper questions. And uh, as I mentioned in my previous video of this series that I'm starting with pure three because uh, weightage wise, percentage wise, it has the highest weighted, highest percentage. So we gotta start with this one. Uh, and the topic, that we have for today is absolute value and inequality question. So normally you get a question about this topic at the start of the paper and maximum, you can get a maximum of five to six mark and a minimum of like three mark question from here. Now this topic or these kind of questions can be approached by different ways. I have to be very clear with it that these kind of questions can be solved by like at least two to three ways. Uh, but what I personally like is the method in which you have to scare on both sides. So before you start this thing, there are some prerequisites of this topic as well that uh, should be there in your mind so you can in order to solve these questions. Now, what are those prerequisites? Uh, let me explain that. First of all, your question would be, something like this x plus a uh, absolute value of it or plus minus whatever they can give anything less than or sometimes equal to sometimes greater than then here you have another thing all right on the other side you'll be given with another thing like x plus b or plus minus whatsoever so this is the like the general syntax of the question. You have absolute value on one side, then absolute value on the other side, and then you have inequality sign or equality sign between these two. Now, how many variations are possible in these questions? There are two to three variations. One of the variation is they give you equal to sign, like which you can see in question number one that I pasted over here. That question is example of that variation. Why did, you, why did they just give you equal to sign between two absolute values? The other variation is you get an absolute value, let's say x plus two greater than, and on the other side, you don't have the absolute value. All right, this is the second variation. And the third variation is on both sides, you have absolute value, All right? Now I'll be solving one question from each of these variations. Let's start with the first one. And yeah, before I start it, in order to go with this method of uh, scaring both sides, you have to realize that if I have an absolute value, let's call it, uh, x all right and if i take scare of it scare of that absolute value then it would be equal to the scare of x all right this is the first thing that you need to know about it now right now i'm not really going into the basics not into the explanation of what the absolute value is. Uh, I believe that you should be aware of it at this stage because this session is the past paper practice and specially designed for those who have to appear for the exam. But on like a uh, very small note, I can tell you the absolute value represents that if you have a number minus three and you take absolute value of that. So that would make it plus three. So you're only taking the positive value. That's why we can say that this thing equals to the square of X, because in any case, you're just using the positive value. So you take the square of it, the negative value would eventually be eliminated. So that's why we can write it like this. And the other thing that you need to know about it is, uh, if you have an inequality that is written like this, a greater than b, 
and you take skin on both sides which we'll be doing in the questions as well you take skin on both sides then a a squared would still be greater than b squared but only if a and b both are positive numbers is a and b greater than zero again i mean there's an explanation for it that let's say your first number was two we know two greater than zero okay now you take scale on both sides what do you get you get four here and one here now four still greater than one right and once again the term and condition was a and b this one a and this one b both numbers should be positive numbers because if you have negative numbers think about it if let's say the first number is negative two and the we know that negative two is greater than negative three all right now what if you take the scale on both sides if you take scale on the left side you get four and if you take the scale on the right side you get nine now in that case a square is no longer greater than b square all right so so we can't say if the first number was greater than the second number then you take square on both sides the first number is still greater than the second no in the case of negative numbers it might be the other way around so this thing only works the scale method only works if both numbers are greater than zero both numbers are positive numbers all right that is the only prerequisite for this topic now let's head straight to question number one solve the equation so i'm going to write it once again two then absolute value of x minus one equals three and absolute value of x now like i said there are plenty of methods by which you can solve this one but what i'm going to do is i'll be solving it by the method of uh, taking skill on both sides let me just add some space over here so let's take skill on both sides and when they say you have to solve the equation that means you need to find the value of x right so you need to find value or values of x all right so let's take scale on both sides got to be very careful with it when you take the scale on both sides make sure you take the scale of the whole thing not only the first thing or the second thing got to take the scale of the whole thing and that one just need a moment all right now this thing can be written as four then you have to take care of x minus one so you expand it by the identity it would be a squared plus b squared minus minus 2ab plus b squared equals the square of 3 would be 9 the square of x would be x squared all right let's simplify simplify this one 4x square 8x plus 4 9x squared
then you can take negative one common or you can just leave it leave till here as well but i'll be taking multiplying both sides by minus one just to make it look better all right so this is what you get after scaring both sides this is what you get from here now after that you need as like i said we need to find the value of x you can do it by if the method of making factors is possible you can make the factors otherwise you can just uh, apply the quadratic formula hit it on the calculator and obtain the two values of x so the value of a would be 5 value of b in that case would be 8 value of c would be negative 4 you apply the quadratic formula all right you can just write the quadratic formula on the sheet of paper um, you can do one more step by inserting the values and then you can simply hit it on the calculator because in calculator you can just insert the coefficients a b c and that gives you the two value of x straight away so you hit it on the calculator and you'll be getting let me hit it over here b was All right, so you what you get is first value is two or five and the second value is negative two. All right, so you get two values. Uh, the first value is two or five. And the second value that you get from here is negative two. Write it over here. All right, so that's it. That's the end of the first part. Uh, I always recommend the method of taking scale on both sides. You're eventually left with the quadratic equation. You can just solve it by making the factors. If possible, you can make the factors. Otherwise, I prefer that you apply the quadratic formula straight away. All right. So uh, let's move on to the second part of it. So the second part says, that you need to solve, yeah, hand solve uh, two into, now instead of x, they have replaced it with five raised power x, okay? So two absolute value of five x minus one. Let's write the second part over here. absolute value of 5x minus 1 to 3 to absolute value of 5x let me check it once again 3 uh, absolute value of 5x and the question says hence solve the equation you have to solve this one equation and the answer has to be in three significant figures okay that's the other thing All right, so we already, you see there's a lot of similarity in this thing and the previously mentioned equation, previous equation. So uh, all they have done is they have replaced the x, the variable by a five raised power x. So you can like suppose that this thing, which you have on both sides, you can replace it with another variable, which is not an exponential one. So I can say, Suppose you can call it K, you can call it A or anything you have for anything. All right. So now I can write the inequality like two. 
it would be u minus 1 equals 3u all right then you already sold something like this all right this thing or the equation that like this we have already solved it so for this one when we were given with uh, uh, equation like this we had two values of x now the uh, variable is not x it is u so the values of u would be one value of u would be uh, 2 or 5 and the second value of u would be negative 2 all right because this thing corresponds to the same equation that we solved previously the only difference would be uh, in the green equation in this one equation you found the values of x but if you are given in terms of u your values would be in terms of u you'll be finding the values of u all right so i can say that u equals to 2 or 5 okay so 5x equals to u 5x also equals to u so i can say 5 raised to the power x it equals to 2 or 5 2 or 5 and then 5x also equals to u and u also equals to negative 2 so you can say 5 raised to the power x equals negative 2 all right now in order to solve the equation you need to find the value of x and you got to get rid of the uh, x from the exponent and the only way that you can do it by taking natural log on both sides all right so for this one i'm go going to hit the pause button for this one because you take natural log on both sides you get something with the negative sign with the natural log and that gives you nothing it you can't solve this one however you can simplify this one you take natural log on both sides equals natural log of 2 or 5 all right then you use property of log that if you have an exponent of a number then you can get the exponent at the back as a coefficient now once again uh, you needed to find your uh, the value of x so you just shift ln of 5 on the other ln 5 on the other side so you'll be left with ln of 2 or 5 divided by natural log of 5 then you hit it on the calculator all right so we get x equals minus 0 0.569 because we had to write the answer in three significant figures zero on the left side before decimal is not part of the significant figure so your answer in three significant figure is not negative of not 0.569 right so this is how we solve the uh, absolute value question variation one when both sides on both sides absolute value is given and in the middle you have the equation not the inequality all right now let's move on to the variation two
all right so i'll be pasting a question of that variation as well just give me a moment all right so here we have the next question let me just paste it over here simplify the inequality that is four mark question variation two and that is by the way from october november 2020 paper three one kind of a recent question question is not clear I'll write it once again 2 minus 5 X greater than 2 times the absolute value of X minus 3 all right this is a question that you have and you need to solve the inequality it means you need to find the value of X or yeah or values of X let's see all right uh, how do we know it is the second variation because now the inequality the absolute value is given on the on one side and the left side of the equation left side of the inequality is without the absolute value uh, the method of solving it will just be the same let us first solve it by the same method and then I'll explain what do we what is the extra thing that we need to do in that so um, once again I'm going to use the method of taking square on both sides so take the square of like 2x 2 minus 5x all right uh, you take square on both sides what do we have? yeah and that would be the first step in which you're taking the square on both sides so let's start this one all right so it would be four i'm taking square directly okay four minus 20x plus 25x squared then you have on the right side if you take square of the right side you'll be left with 4 x squared minus 6x plus 9 all right and then you simplify it four x squared minus 24x plus 36 all right then you can rearrange it bring all the terms on one side and you'll be left with greater than zero on the other side right, so it would be yeah so 25 x squared minus 4 x squared would be 21 x squared all right and then minus 20 x plus 24 x you shift 24 on the left side you get plus 24 X and that would be plus sorry plus 4 X and after you have 4 from here minus 36 you get once you shift 36 on the left side and you will be left with minus 32 greater than nothing all right zero now from here once again you have to hit it on the calculator you have the quadratic equation all right so in the quadratic equation you have the value of a as 21 the coefficient of x squared is 21 the coefficient of x is 4 and the coefficient or the constant is negative 32 you apply a quadratic formula all 
All right, you can just hit it on the calculator straight away. But just to be on the safer side, you can first write down the formula and the two values of x that you get would be. All right, just let me hit it on the calculator. First value is 8 over 7. And the second value would be minus 4 over 3. All right, now we have the two values of x. But which one of these two values are we going to use or we do, uh, do we use both of them well it depends now you see uh, this inequality this inequality the right side is totally fine you remember i told you one thing if a greater than b then a square greater than b square only if a and b are positive numbers All right only if a and b are greater than zero only then we can apply the method of taking square on both sides and that would give you that would give us the value of x which we would which would be consistent with the question but if one of the number is not greater than zero if not positive then this method would fail so for this method to work fine this thing has to be greater than zero this thing has to be positive why not the other one? Because the other one is already positive. X minus 3 is already the absolute value. So you'll always be getting the positive value from here. But uh, the condition has to be with 2 minus 5x. Because we don't have the absolute value of x, and it is very much possible that we get a value of x with the negative sign, or we get 2 minus 5x. The answer of 2 minus 5x would be a negative value. Right? There's a possibility so we have to make sure that the answer of 2 minus 5 X has to be greater than 0 All right and this is a variation so uh, basically whatever thing is given without the absolute value you put that thing greater than 0 all right that that is the only variation here so I was given with 2 minus 5 X without the absolute value so i'll be putting 2 minus 5x which was given without the absolute value i'll put it greater than zero and i'll solve it for the value of x and x in that case would be negative two on both sides negative negative cancel out you'll be left with two or five so it says Oh yeah, just miss one thing there. You see, you, uh, you'll be left with minus 5x greater than minus 2. Then you need to get rid of the negative sign. And one of the principle is you got to multiply both sides by negative 1. And the inequality would be reversed. All right, if you don't know that, then what you can do is just shift 5x on the other side. All right, that would be easier for you if you want to do it that way so it would be 2 and x would be less than 2 or 5 all right so what i'm saying is i shifted this two on the other side and then i had to multiply both sides by minus one uh, you, if you're prone to forgetting this thing so just shift this minus 5x on the other side and you'll be left with plus 5x and then you can write x over here 5 would be divided on the other side 2 or 5 greater than x or x once again you get the same thing x less than 2 or 5 all right now we have a condition there is a condition that x has to be less than 2 or 5 so you were given with two possible values 
after applying the quadratic formula, you had two possible values, which is the first one was x equals to 8 over 7. All right. And the second one was x equals to negative 4 over 3. Now, you apply the variation in that. The term and condition was x has to be less than 2 over 5. Now, which one of these two options, which one of these two value of x satisfy this condition? That x is less than 2 over 5. Not the first one. Certainly, x has to be less than 2 over 5. But 8 over 7 is greater than 2 over 5. So, this value of x is not compatible in this question. Rather, negative 4 over 3 is less than 2 over 5. So, we got to use only this value of x as the answer. So, what I can write here, here is x less than minus 4 over 3. All right, so out of the, those two values, we have to choose one and make sure you choose the value that is being satisfied by the condition. So I'll be writing over here, this is the condition. This was the condition that we had to take care of. And this value of x, it actually failed to meet the condition. And this value of x, it passed or it satisfied the condition. So that's why we can't use this one and we have to use the second value of x. So this is the second variation that you get from here. Let me add some space. And now we have just the final variation that you, you can get from this question. Which is, I mean, by the way, even simpler. So let me take a sample question from here. Okay, so All right, everyone, so this is the third variation that you get from here. So in this one, the difference is you have on both sides, you have the absolute values and in the middle, you have the inequality sign. So it is the inequality with absolute values on either side. So that's how you recognize that it is the third variation. So uh, let us solve it straight away by the method of taking scale on both sides and then we'll uh, find out the answer. First of all, in that method, you don't need to put anything greater than zero because it already means that both the values, the value of x plus two, uh, your is given in as the absolute value of x plus two, so it's automatically positive. And three x minus one, you're given as an absolute value, so that's already positive. So no need to do anything in order to find the condition like we did in the second variation where one thing was given with without the absolute value like this. But in this case, both the values are, both the sides have the absolute value. So let us uh, take scare on both sides 
and let's see how the things fold x square plus 4x plus 4 greater than a square minus 2ab plus b square then you do some simplification shift everything on one side All right, solve the like terms. And after that step, uh, like I said, you can just make it look better so we can get rid of the negative sign by multiplying by minus one on both sides but even if you don't do that that doesn't make any difference you can use the quadratic formula as it is but you multiply both sides by a negative number this thing would be reversed the inequality sign would be reversed so now you hit it on the calculator. You know the value of a, b, and c. Your a in that case equals five. Your b in that case equals negative 22. And your c in that case equals negative 15. All right, that is negative 15. Now I just need a moment. I'll hit it on the calculator and I'll obtain the two values of x okay so i get x equals negative three or five and x equals 5 all right and if i just paste the question one once again yeah solve the inequality all right now whenever you're given with two uh absolute values and in the middle of that you have the inequality the answer would be a certain range right it won't be uh, it may not necessarily be two explicit values or one explicit value a fixed value it would always be in a range in in this variation now you have to think about it that uh, what should be the range for your answer or what would should be the range for the value of x should it be like x greater than 5 and less than minus 3 over 5 or like x less than minus 3 over 5 and x greater than 5 so just we need to uh, in this one we need to be clear what sign should we use over here in the inequality so the range that we have has to be between these two numbers but what values should we use now this is the thing that would give you the hint about it this thing and it tells you the values of x should be in a way that this condition is satisfied that whatever value of x you put 
the answer has to be less than zero or aka a negative number all right you choose the value of x in a way that the answer is a negative number so if i say like x greater than five and i'll try to find out if i write it like this x greater than five do i get a negative number no i won't be getting a negative number uh, all you can do is just assume that x equals to six and if x equals six you'll be getting thirty three you get thirty three so that condition would fail this condition that x should be a negative number would fail so x uh, it would tell you from here that x has to be less than 5 because when we put x greater than 5 the condition failed we did not get a negative number so x has to be less than 5 all right and let's th think about minus 3 over 5 as well. So if I put anything x greater than, I assume that x greater than 3 over 5, and then I put anything like x greater than 3 over 5, let's say, let's call it 1. 1 is greater than 5. And if I put the value of x greater than minus 3 over 5, do I satisfy this condition? Let's check it out. You put x as 1. Oh, raise it all accidentally. Minus 22, 1, minus 15. You get a negative number, okay? When you put any value that is greater than minus 3 over 5, get a negative number which satisfy the condition which condition again this one that the answer has to be a negative number it has to be less than it has to be less than zero yeah so this condition is satisfied if i put anything greater than three over five but if you do it the other way you put anything less than three or five so for instance, you put anything let's say you put x equals think about a number that is less than 3 over 5 let's call it negative 2 or yeah negative 2, negative 4, negative 5 or anything put it in place of x and if the answer is still a negative number that would be all good but the answer that you get is 153 which is a positive number so the condition fails all right the condition fails so the condition was satisfied when x was less than 5 and x was greater than 3 or 5 so you can combine these two to write it as x has to be greater than minus 3 or 5 and less than 5 and that would be the answer for this one Now this method of checking that I've told you is a very general method. However, there are some advanced method as well. You can draw a graph and from the graph you will predict that the values that go towards the negative towards the uh, negative y axis or yeah, the values that are towards the negative y axis would be would all be the values that are satisfying the condition 
so you can use the graphical method as well but this is a general method uh, once you are advanced enough you can make a prediction straight away and you will be able to like find out once you have the two values two possible values which we got from here like here we had the two possible values then it was all about writing the inequality sign with these two values like should x be greater than 5 or less than 5 you need to check from this value of x and should x be greater than minus 3 or 5 or less than 3 or 5 I have to check from here obviously you need to like see only for one value of x and for the other one obviously it would be the other way around right so that is the third variation that you get from this topic so i'll be uploading the solve worksheet on the google drive and you can find the link of it in the description and in my next video i'll be solving the uh, topical past paper questions of polynomial division which is from the algebra so that's it for today see you in the next lesson take good care allah face